Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. All right. Good to be back in church again. Back for everybody that's here. We got a couple of young ladies going to come up and sing us a song, and we're going to turn families. Where are you girls at? Where'd they go? They took off to the kitchen. Uh, never mind. Prayer request for the All right. Anybody have a spoken request you want to be made known? Go ahead, Angie. Yeah, I know I've met her. 
imagine when all I would do is forever, forever worship you. I can only imagine Thank Sister Pam Hawkins welcome as she came to say
There ain't nothing he can't do. He did it for me. And he can do it for you. If you're trying to feel the same old holes inside, well, there's a better life. There's a better life. If you got pain, he's a pain taker. And if you feel lost, well, he's a way maker. If you need freedom or saving, he's a prison shaker.
Thank you, Jesus. Have you ever needed rescued in your life? Sometimes we need a little bit of help. We we are a brother's keeper tonight. But sometimes, Brother Bobby, we need some help. But have you there's been times in my life that I needed rescued? Well, no rescued, honey. The fire department, an ambulance, or somebody I needed rescued. Amen. Oh my God. And you know what? Honey, I called on the Lord. And never one time have I called on Jesus and him not can. He'd always answer. Amen. But you know what? He also said in his word that honey, he would call on us sometime and us not answer. Then one of these days we might need to call on him. And he said he'd laugh at our calamities. I don't want that to be in my life. Amen. Honey, when God knocks on your heart, we need to answer. We need to open up and say, Lord, here I am, Jesus. Whatever you have tonight, that's what I want to be. Amen. And if you don't know him, he wants you. Amen. He came for nobody else but you. Amen. Amen. Maybe you can stand up 
and give your testimony of how God rescued you. Amen. I love when people give their testimonies, Brother Bobby. For one thing, we're overcomers by them. But you never know what somebody might be facing in life. That, and that you might be the one to pull them through. Amen. Because I've been times in my life, I've, I've been there and somebody would say, and, you know, talk about the goodness of the Lord. And you know what? I needed it. I thought, God, for what I'm going through, if you can pull them out, you can pull me out. Amen. Amen. Somebody, somebody testify for the Lord. Amen. Amen. He's good. Amen. Well, I want to the Lord for everybody praying to me Jesus. last night. You know, I, 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 I struggled last night at all when I got home, even worse than I was when I was here. Yeah. But about 4 o'clock, I had a rough spell, and old day tried to say, hey, look there, nobody's praying for you. I said, you're wrong, old boy. I feel good now. Telling you that nobody's praying, that's when you got to know them. They must be praying hard. Because he's, he's a father of lies. Hey, if he tells you you're going to die, I, I, Brother Bobby, we must be going to live forever. He's a liar. He's a liar. Amen. He's a liar. He's good. God is good.
fellowshipping with people, and then we go our way and you go your way. But, uh, amen. Just always keep us in your prayers. Amen. 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 The only thing we can do is what the Lord would allow us to do. We can't do anything other than what He would have us to do. He's the preacher. Amen. Amen. He's the preacher. Amen. If you got your Bibles with you tonight, I want you to turn to the book of Mark. Amen. Chapter 14. And we're going to read a few verses and then we're going to try our best to preach to you. I'm going to try not to hold you too long tonight. Amen. I know I've said that every night. Just about. Amen. But I mean it tonight. Amen. I just want to Kevin to know he saved the prettiest singer to last. Amen. Amen. Try to be some points there, Eve. Amen. Mark chapter 14, verse 22. As, as they did eat, Jesus took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took a cup and when he had give thanks, he gave it to them and they all drank of it. And he said unto them, This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many. Verily I say unto you, I will know I will drink no more of the fruit of the vine until the day I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Amen. And when they had sung hymns, they went out into the Mount of Olives. I'm gonna try my best to preach to you tonight on this thought. The body <laughs> The blood, the cross. Amen. That's what I'm going to try to preach to you. Amen. Yeah. I was thinking today about it being what we call, I know some people just don't, you know, they just take it as another day. And I know it is just another day. We don't know exactly the day when Jesus was crucified. I understand that. Amen. But we set aside this day. To honor the day that the Lord died on a cross for us. There's, there's no greater day than this day that we celebrate this. This day is greater than what they call Christmas. The birth of Christ. This day is greater than any of those other days. Because if he had not died, it would have done him no good to be born. You believe that tonight? Amen. If he had not done what he came upon this earth to do, it would have done him no good to come. All the miracles that he done would not pay for our sins. All the blinded eyes that he opened would not cover our sins, would not block our sins away. Him walking on the water, and I'm not, I don't mean no disrespect, that's wonderful. All those things were a bonus of what he did. And I was reading in the Word the other night, and it said that if all the books that could be written were written, that the world, could, not a library, the whole world could not contain the books of the things that Christ did while he was up on this earth. We lost about 18 years of his life between. The age of 12 to the age of 33. Right, right. We don't know exactly what happened in between those years. But the Bible said, not me, the Bible said that if it had been written down, that the books of this whole wide world would not be able to contain it. So I'm going to tell you something. He done more than what you think he did. He done more than what we read in this book. Amen. He he. He healed more than what we know. He delivered more than what we know. He done great things. He fed more than what we know. He did a, a, a wonderful, wonderful ministry throughout his life. But I'm going to tell you something. Jesus Christ was a normal man. He was as much man as he was God. Would y'all agree with that? Now, I'm not preaching doctrine. That's what the Word says. 
Word said he was God made flesh. He was as much man as he was God. He had flesh just like I do. And I'm going to tell you something. I believe with all of my heart when he was a child, he was sick just like any other child. I believe that when he mashed his fingers, he felt it. I believe when he fell down, his mommy picked him up and kissed him and said, it's going to be all right. He was just a normal man, just like we were. Amen. He was the Son of God, but he was also the Son of Man. Amen. And the Son of Man felt the pain of the world. The Son of Man felt the anguish and the agony. He felt when somebody laughed at him and made fun of him, it hurt his feelings. And he felt that in his body. Just like you and I do. He was man. He felt the pain. The Bible said that he would suffer just like any other man. What made him so great was is that he submitted to his Father's will. Even though he was man, he submitted to his Father's will. He was man. He felt the anguish. He felt the sickness. He felt the disease. He was a man just like we are. And he walked upon the face of this earth. Amen. Just like we do. He suffered every little feeling that you have. I believe it was put on Christ and he felt that. I believe he felt depression. I believe he felt anxiety. I believe he felt all those things when they come upon him. Because how would he know, amen, how we feel if he did not experience these things himself? Amen. I believe with all of my heart that when he came and he come up to a certain age, I believe they, they, they found him teaching in the temple as a young little boy. And they wanted to know what he was doing. And he said, I must be about my father's will. Even from a child, he knew the difference between him being 12 and him doing the father's will. We got to know the difference between just being man. Well, I'm just a man, but you're also a child of God. You got to know the difference between being just a man and being a child of God. We are not just, amen, normal people. We are the children of the living God. There is something special about us. I've heard people say, and I've said it myself, I'm no different than the sinner, but I am. I'm forgiven. I'm accepted. Amen. I got to be about my Father's will and do what my Father has called me to do. Amen. Jesus suffered just like any other person. I'm preaching about the body of Christ, the Son of God, the Son of Man. He suffered, Brother Bobby. He hurt. And I'm going to tell you something. When it came down time for Jesus to die, He didn't want to do it. He said it. He said, Father, if there be any other way, let this cup pass from me. But nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. You know what He was saying there? i got to be about my Father's business. Amen. Here we find that Jesus has come and he's come to the end of his life. And I believe he knows that. He told one, he said in his word there, he said, from this end, from this coming unto this end, I was born for this. Jesus, I, I don't know, y'all may not agree, but I believe Jesus knows he was born to die. I believe he knows that. See, he had an earthly mother, so he had to be, amen, had the fleshly natures of a man. But he had a heavenly father. He said, the works I do, I don't do them. It's the father working in me. He was both man and God. Flesh and spirit. What's your biggest problem today? Your flesh fighting your spirit. Your flesh is your enemy. Your flesh. I mean, you, you, you know the devil's not your biggest problem. Can I preach to you tonight? The devil's not your biggest problem. 
He's defeated. The Bible said that he was defeated. I believe one writer said when we see him, amen, we'll say this is him that caused the world to tremble. Your biggest problem is your flesh. Your flesh causes you to do wrong. Your flesh will tell you, stay home. Your flesh will say, don't read the Bible. Your flesh will say, don't believe the preacher. Because your flesh is what sins against God. It's the body that has to be, amen, brought under subjection to the Spirit. Is this all right? Am I all right? I feel a little weird up in here tonight. Amen. Do y'all not believe what I'm preaching to you tonight? Amen. It's your flesh that will cause you to die and go to hell. Amen. It's your flesh. Your flesh. Jesus' biggest enemy wasn't the devil. It was his flesh. His flesh fought against the spirit. Oh, but he was the son of God. He was the son of man. I know that, but his flesh... His flesh did not want to die. I've heard people say, I'd be willing to die for God. I'd stand right up and die for God. No, you would. No, you would. Not when you can go to, not when you can't go to church on time. Not when you can't be dedicated to the church and you can't be dedicated to his word and you can't be dedicated to God. Don't tell me you'd die for him. It's a fight. We're in a fight with our flesh. A war. A war. Jesus come into the upper room there. And the table is set. And the words that he's getting ready to utter out of his mouth. If we had been sitting there, we'd have got up and walked out. We would have had our minds blown by what he was getting ready to say. He took a loaf of bread, unleavened bread, and he broke that bread. And he began to distribute it unto the twelve. Judas was there. He distributed it among the twelve. And Bobby, he said, Take this and eat. We wouldn't have any trouble eating the bread. But the next words he said, we'd have spit it out and probably run out of the room. Because the next words that he uttered is not just for right now. It was a foretelling of what was getting ready to happen. He said, this is my body that is broken for you. Take ye and eat all of it. Ain't none of us will see nobody's body. We ain't cannibals. That's what we think. We say, huh, uh, buddy. We don't want nothing to do with that. Amen. But he was telling and he was showing that he was getting ready to be broken. Like no man has ever been broken before. Oh, there was thousands. I looked it up today. You know the Roman soldiers in the revolt against the Jews, there was over 500 people crucified every single day. They lined their streets with crosses and sticks and crucified 500 people a day. That's true. That's true. And the Romans had, had perfected crucifixion that you didn't just die. That'd been all right if you just died. Lethal injection, you just die. The electric chair, you just die. But on that cross, you was made to suffer. They had perfected a suffering, amen, that you and the rest of the world would see your suffering. Jesus said, eat this. It's my body that is broken for you. Take it and eat ye all of it. This normal man, this son of man, this son of God says, this is my body that is broken for you. And then he takes and pours the cup full. And he blesses it. And he says, drink. This is my blood. Oh Lord, you talk about flipping out. Honey, we 
you to flip that. But he was getting ready to show them what was getting ready to happen to him. They loved him. John couldn't stay off his breast. John laid on him because he loved him so much. Peter was so in love with him that he said, I'll die for you. Just like we do. Just like we do. But when the pressure comes and the flesh rises up, we're like, oh, no, 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 no. He says, take and drink. I almost, I didn't know if I should have or not, but I almost brought a loaf of bread and a bottle of juice. Y'all believe in that? We do it. We gonna do it tomorrow night if I ain't here. Hey man, but you look here. You look, I wanna, I wanna help somebody tonight. He said, drink ye all of it. This is the blood of the New Testament. One, one covenant cannot stop unless another covenant began. One testament can stop unless a new testament began. They were under the law. They were under the hand of the law. But what Jesus was getting ready to do was more than this world can even confound. Amen. What Jesus was getting ready to do is more than the church can understand. He said, drink ye all of it. That's why I always tell people, you can't just pick and choose what you want out of that book. Huh? Am I all right? Some people, all they want is Romans and Corinthians and the rest of it they ain't worried about. I ain't an Ephesian and I ain't a Galatian. I don't want nothing to do with all that. And I don't understand Revelations. I don't even want to go there. He said to eat all of it. He said, drink ye all of it. This is the blood of the New Testament. Drink ye all of it. From Acts all the way down to the book of Revelation, God intends for us to eat of His Word and drink of His blood and to take it, amen, with sincerity. With sincerity. They didn't understand what He was talking about. I wonder if they did wonder in their minds what in the world what in the world is he talking about eat his flesh drink his blood his body his body it was a representation of his body Oh, Lord, I'm going to get in trouble. I just know it is. I know it is, and I know my name's going to get took off this board. But this right here is his body. Is that all right? Hey, man, that's what we believe where I go. This is his body. And when you take of his body, hey, man, you've got to take it, hey, amen, with sincerity. This ain't meant to be left on the back seat of a car. It ain't meant to be left on the dashboard. It ain't meant to be left on the coffee table. But you are to consume it, eat it, taste it, be partakers of the broken bread and the blood of the cross of Christ. Why do you think Jesus said, I am the bread? Huh? Why do you think Jesus said, I am the water? Why do you think Jesus said, I am the wine? Why do you think Jesus said, I'm the good shepherd? Why do you think Jesus said, I am the word? We think Jesus came and gone and ain't nothing left of him. You're holding him in your hand right here. He is the word. And the word was made flesh. And the word was among us. And we beheld his glory. The body. Yes, sir. The body. Somebody said that's just an old book. It's a beautiful It's just an old book. Just an old book. Let me tell you what an old book does. Old book will sell real good for a little bit, and then it'll disappear. Just a book. Just a magazine, just a storybook, they'll read the stories in it, throw it down, and never pick it back up again. But for some reason, this book 
is still the number one seller in the whole wide world. It's the best seller in Africa, Egypt, everywhere you can think of. This book is the best seller. Why do you think that is? Because it's Christ. It's Christ in our hands. We have. Oh Lord, have mercy. Oh Lord, have mercy. You remember when when Thomas? You, I'm all right. I ain't gonna fall. You remember when Thomas? It wouldn't be my first time, no way. Amen. But you remember when Thomas? Thomas? Amen. Didn't believe. He didn't believe him, and he said, "Thomas, put your hand in my side." Uh, touch my hand, see that I am real. Amen. You know what you're doing when you pick that book up? You're doing what Thomas did. You're touching him. You're handling him. He's real today, church. You're handling him. You're seeing that he's real. You're seeing that the things that he done in that book was real. From Genesis to Revelation, he walks through the pages of that book. There's nowhere you can go where you'll outrun God. David said, if I make my bed in hell, Lord, thou art there. If I ascend into the heavens, Lord, thou art there. There's no hiding place down here from God. You can hide it from the deacons. You can hide it from the preacher. You can hide it from the ladies' aid. You can hide it from the men's fellowship, the treasurer of the church. But you cannot and you will not hide it from an almighty God. Today's Good Friday. Wasn't so good for him. It wasn't so good for the disciples when it first started taking place. Because can you imagine walking with him, talking with him, seeing him do all these miracles? You just eat his blood. You just eat his flesh. And now he's been taken away. Oh, Lord. We can't handle it if God goes one day and don't pass by our way. We can't handle it, not one second of a day that God ain't got our undivided attention. And he, or we got His undivided attention. But they took Him and led Him away. They crucified Him. They broke the body. Just as He broke the bread, they broke the body. Pilate looked at him and said, Do you not know that I have the authority to crucify you or release you? Jesus didn't say a whole lot in Pilate's hall. But he backed up and looked him square in the face and said, You'd have no power at all if it wasn't given to you from above. Huh? He said, Don't you know, Pilate, I have the power to call them a host of angels and they'll come and free me and take me away. But he knows you had to eat that flesh and drink that blood. You had to. They took him out and they crucified him. They placed a crown of thorns on his head. There's no way I can describe to you. They need a preacher alive can describe to you how brutal it was. They spit on him. They made fun of him. They stripped him naked. Stood him out before thousands. Amen. Naked. Amen. And ashamed. They placed a scarlet robe upon him. They beat him. They beat him so bad that I believe he was almost unrecognizable. 39 stripes save one. You know why they didn't do the 40th one? Because he would have died. So they thought. But see, they didn't realize they didn't have no power to kill him. Huh? They used to sing an old song that the Jews and the Romans killed him. Uh uh. Nobody killed the Lord. Nobody killed him. He gave his life. He said, If I give my life, I'll take it up again. If they'd have killed him, he'd have stayed dead. But because he died, he rose to death. I'm getting ahead of myself. Yeah. Oh, man. I told you about the body, now I want to tell you about the blood. 
they beat him right there in Pilate's hall. He ordered, he said, I don't find anything wrong with this man. Take him out and scourge him. Mm. They beat him with reeds. They beat him with reeds. They beat him with a cat of nine tails, is what they call it. A cat of nine tails. Amen. It was leather straps that were wo wo woven with bone and with glass and all kinds of sharp metal. Right, yeah. How many of y'all ever seen the Passion of the Christ? Yeah. I believe that's one of the most, amen, realest things that, amen, that you'd ever see. And I believe it was worse than that. But I will tell you something. I believe when they took that whip and they wrapped it around his body, amen, his flesh was torn just like he tore that bread. Amen, I believe his, amen, his side was riven. Amen, his organs was exposed. And the blood of a precious Christ ran down in Pilate's hall. Amen, when they brought him back in there, I believe he was unrecognized. I believe it was like, whoa. Could you imagine... Could you imagine looking at him through the eyes of Mary, his mother? His mother. As she stood there and watched as they spit upon him, as they cursed him, as they mocked him and made fun of him. You freed others, but you can't free yourself. Honey, they don't have no clue who they're dealing with. Huh? You think John Wick's a bad man. You ain't seen nothing. Do you see Jesus in action? They whipped him so much that his blood filled the ground. They brought him back in there with a crown of thorns upon his head as they mashed him down upon him. As they laughed at him, and one writer said they smote him on the face and said, Prophesy who smiteth thee. I'd hate to be that sucker. They plucked his beard, pulled it out, mocked him, and made fun of him. How could we call this a good Friday? It wasn't too good for him. Because they brought him back up there. Pilate still says unto the people, I find no fault in this man. And the Jews and the Sanhedrin, they hollered, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. And Pilate said, well, it's, amen, it's under the law that I can release unto you one, amen, on this Sabbath day, for the Sabbath. And you know what they said? They said, give us Barabbas. They chose Barabbas, a murderer. Amen. A man that, amen, stirred up trouble. Ain't it something how those people would rather have a murderer than they would a man that did nothing but good, that did nothing but help, and did nothing but save and deliver and set free? It's the same way today. It's the same way today. They could have had Beyonce. Than they would Jesus. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Huh? They have, they'd rather have Taylor Swift. Oh, she's a Christian, I forgot. And I'm an airplane pilot. Who wants a ride? They are picking the ways of the world over the over this man who came. Amen. To save them from their sins. Yeah. They're doing the same thing. They're saying, give us Barabbas. Give us Barabbas and crucify him. Pilate says, I wash my hands of this matter. And you know what the crazy people said? Let his blood be upon us. <laughs> Ooh. Let his blood be upon us and upon our children. I'm talking about the blood of Jesus Christ. Let it be upon us and upon our children. They wouldn't say it. Let his blood be applied to our life like we have said. They're saying let the guilt of his blood be upon us. 
Let it be upon us. Let it be upon our children. We take the blame. We'll take the responsibility. Pilate washed his hands. And they led him away to be crucified. After all he's been through, they led him away to be crucified. The Roman crucifixion, they never required two, two poles. Amen. That were formed in like a cross matter. Amen. And there they took him and they placed that cross upon his back and they led him away. Beaten and bruised, been up all night. Amen. Been up, amen. Being being slapped, being spit upon, being made fun of. Amen. Having his beard plucked out. Nothing to eat, nothing to drink. And here he goes. He gets through the streets of Jerusalem and they're laughing at him. They're making fun of him. They're mocking him. They're saying, look at this man. Look at this man. And he falls beneath his load. Now I wonder why, I wonder why for a long time, why he fell beneath his load. And you might say, well, Robbie, I believe it was because he was tired. My yeah. Sins, my sins I believe he was tired, ain't no doubt in my mind. But I believe he fell because it has more to prove than if he hadn't failed. Because you know what they done? The Roman soldier grabbed one out of the crowd named Simon Serene and said, help him bear his cross. You know what? Sometimes I need somebody in the church to get a hold of my cross and help me pick it up and make my way home. I'm telling you, amen. Amen. He made the way for us. They put him on that cross and they nailed him. I got one of the nails at the house from, from Rome. It's about seven inches long. They put it in the palm of his hand and they drove the nails in his hands yeah. and they drove the nails in his feet yeah. Yeah. but you know what they drove the nails through his hands and through his feet and they didn't break not one bone huh Back in 1968, they dug up a body of a man that they, they declared that the way of his death was crucifixion. His, his heel bone had a nail going right through it. Look it up on the internet, you'll see it. They give him a name, I can't remember what it was. That nail went right through the bone of his heel. That proved that they broke bones. When they crucified. But when it come to our Lord. They miss the bone. Why did they miss the bone? Because the prophet said. Not one of his bones would be broken. <laughs> his word. I told you, His word ain't no little story book. It's real. And it's alive today. Amen. Amen. Not, one bone, not one bone was broken. On that cross. They hung him out. They raised that cross up between the heavens and the earth. That's where they messed up at. Right there. If they'd have left him laying there and let him die, it might not have been this way. But they picked him up between the heavens and the earth and they showed him as an open, open to the public. Amen. And I read that scripture in the Word where he said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. When they raised him up there, all they did was fulfill the words of Christ. Because when that cross was hung, amen, the devil got nervous. I'm just about there. I'm just about finished. They had him on that cross. While he was hanging there, they made fun of him. That, that thief looked at him and said, Save yourself. You saved others, save yourself. Save us. If you saved all in, you save us. That one looked over and said, We deserve what we get. 
You know what he was doing now? He was confessing his sins. He was saying, we're guilty for what we've done, but this man's done nothing. This man deserves, does not deserve to die. And then he said, listen man, will you remember me when you come into your kingdom? Will you remember me? I'd say Jesus had a whole lot on his mind. But I'm going to tell you something. He uttered the words back. He said, this day shalt thou be with me in paradise. I want you to know he's never got too much on his mind to take care of us. He's our Lord and our Savior. They give him vinegar. You know what vinegar was? Mango with myrrh. That's a painkiller. That's the only thing they give him. They didn't give him no water. He said, I thirst. I told you he was a man. He thirsted just like a man. He cried out when they nailed his hands and his feet. Well, preacher, the Bible says he didn't say nothing. He didn't when he was in Pilate's hall. But I'm going to tell you something. I believe when they drove those nails in his hands and in his feet, there was a cry that shook him. Yeah. Woo. They gave him vinegar mingled with myrrh. And he turned it away. He wouldn't take it. And with a loud voice, he cries out, Father, why have thou forsaken me? I'm going to explain to you what that is. God didn't die on that cross. The Son of God didn't die on that cross. The Son of Man died on that cross. God can't die. You can't kill God. Amen. He's from beginning to end. He's everlasting. There's no way you could kill Him. But the Spirit had to leave the body so the body could die. That's why He said, Father... Why have thou forsaken me? Yeah. And he cried with a loud voice. Yeah. It is finished. Yeah. And the Bible says that he hung his head and he died. Mm -hmm. The body, the blood, the cross. Yeah. You know what that cross was? That cross was an altar. That cross was an altar of sacrifice. Just like when Moses laid that lamb down on that altar and cut its throat and the blood began to flow. John said he was a lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. He dropped his head and he died. I'm going to tell you something. He didn't stay dead. Uh, hey man, he went, before they ever even got him off that cross, you know what he done? In the spirit, he hopped off that cross and he entered in right into the pits of hell. That's what the Word said. The Word said that he went down and he preached to those that were in captivity. He preached to those that were waiting on a better resurrection. He was waiting on something better than a bull or a goat. They were waiting on a Savior. They were making a promise to them. Oh, God. Well, preacher, you think any of them heard him? Sure. Amen, because I'm going to tell you something. I asked you last night, do you know why they took Jesus at 3 o'clock in the morning? Because they wanted him to die in the daytime. They wanted him to die in the daytime because at 12 o'clock in the day, the sky turned black and stayed dark until the hour of 3 o'clock. And at 3 o'clock, the Bible says that the earth began to shake and the mountains began to tremble and the graves of those that were going on before were opened up and many of the saints were seen walking in the stall. Oh, Y'all don't know what that is. Amen. I'm going to tell you something. When he went down to that place, he said, Jeremiah, get up. I say, get up. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the one that's came. And he snatched those keys 
right off the devil's side and he said I got the keys of death and hell I like that old song the cooks used to sing I mean not the cooks but the I believe it was the Perry's about the conversation. Y'all ever hear that? Yeah. Yeah. Hey man, you need to dig them old songs back up. They got life in them. Yeah. Huh? They got life in them. Yes, hey man, they say, death and Satan be talking, say, have you got them? Yeah, I got them. Yeah. Yeah. I got them the first day. I got them. Yeah. We got them. Hell was having a bop, wasn't it? Yeah. Hey man, I believe it was. I believe it was sipper, uh, celebrating what was going on. Amen. Peter, James, and John were out crying and weeping. Amen. The very man that they had touched, the very man had given them hope, the very man had given them faith and power is now dead. The song says the second day rolled around and Satan asked death. He said, Tell me, Dad, have you still got it? He said, Oh, yeah. Yeah, I still got him. I ain't never lost none of them. Amen. He ain't going nowhere. Amen. Daylight came and daylight went the third day. Oh, which is Sunday. Amen. His trial was Thursday. He died on Friday. He was dead Friday, Saturday, and on Sunday. Look here that third day. Amen. Satan come along and said, Dad, do you have him? He said, Oh. talk about a disappointed devil. You talk about a disappointed devil. I can see old devil right now coming into that tomb. Hey man, looking around and there was old death in the, on the ground looking around. Pain going through the grave. That death angel was a calling through the sand. You know what? Jesus is the only man ever barred a grave. I'm serious. How many of y'all got y'all's grave plots paid for it here? I want to see your hands. Andy, would you loan me your grave? Because if I get in it, I'm going to be in it, right? Amen. But Joseph of Arimathea said, I'll let him borrow mine. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, I'll let him have mine. And our old death, he is a looking in the sand. He's a, he's a rumbling through the stuff. And Satan says, what in the world's wrong with you, death? He said, well, uh, I hate to tell you, Master, but the keys you give me, I've lost them and I can't find them. You know why? Because Jesus had them. Amen. And he's got us. And he's got you. And he's got you. And he's got the drunkard. He's got the nomad. He's got the harbor. Amen. He's a risen Savior tonight. You talk about a party stopper. You talk about a party crasher. Huh? You think it's bad when you're partying and the law knocks on your door and says you're making too much noise. Honey, that didn't have wasn't nothing like. Amen. When Jesus grabbed that death angel by the nap of the neck and threw him down on the ground and took his keys. Let's all stand. Yeah, praise the Lord. <laughs> God give glory. Amen. Glory. Yeah. I truly meant to leave him in the grave. But just can't hardly preach and leave him in the grave. That's right. I was going to let Bobby get him up. Yeah. Mary and him went to the tomb that next morning. That angel was sitting there on the stone. Just looking at him. Yeah. That one gardener spoke to him and said, Why well, seek ye the living among the dead? He's risen. He's risen. He's risen. You go tell Peter and my disciples, He's risen. Amen. I'm telling you today, we're serving a risen Savior. We're serving a Savior that is alive. Muhammad's still in the grave. Buddha's still in the grave. But Jesus got up. He got up! And because he got up, we can get up. Amen. Come on, Sister Plan, give us one more song. Amen. 
If you're in here tonight and you're not where you're supposed to be, Christ has been paid for you. His body was broken for you. Somebody said, what type of blood did Jesus have? What kind of blood did he have? Did he have A negative? O positive? What's some of that other blood? What does that mean? B negative? O positive? What's that real strange thing? I hope you know you give giving people that. <laughs> o negative? They say, well, who's, which blood did he have? He didn't have none of that. Uh-uh. Huh? I watched a show the other night where they said they was digging on top of Galgotha and they found a black substance under the, way down under the earth. Amen. And they proclaimed it was blood. I love how the world is. They say, prove to me he ain't real. Or prove to me he's real. And you know what I say? Prove to me he ain't. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Amen. Because they dug and they felt that. And I ain't saying nothing. I ain't saying nothing. But I'm going to say this. They sent that black looking tar sand off and it came back and it only had 24 chromosomes. <laughs> Different any kind of blood they had ever found in the world. Now was that you? I don't know if it was or not. But I can tell you what kind of blood he had. He had a redemption blood. Huh? He had a royal blood. Huh? He had a forgiving blood. He had a blood that this world had never tasted. Because when that blood hit the ground, it began to convulse as if it would throw up because it had never, ever tasted a pure and righteous blood as our Lord and our Savior. I don't like pictures of Jesus on the cross. I don't like it. I don't mind the cross. The cross just represents what happened. But them Catholics, they always got him on the cross. He ain't on that cross no more. He ain't on that cross no more. He's risen. Hey man, he, he, he came off of that cross. And he's alive tonight. You going to sing? If you're in here tonight, you're not where you need to be. On the hill of Calvary, Jesus, my Lord, suffered for me. He carried the cross. How about you lift your hands in this place tonight? How about when you lift your hands? Lift your hands and lift your head to heaven and thank our Savior for what He does for us. Great was the pain and the loss. He suffered it all. Noah couldn't do it. Jonah couldn't do it. Moses because couldn't do it. He loved huh? me, my they couldn't do it. Because he loved me, my Savior died. On the huh? cross was crucified. He said, no I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing. No Lord mortal has ever been known. Come on, love him tonight. Oh, praise his dear name. Come on, love him tonight. You can rest tomorrow. Now Put your hands and love on him tonight. He suffered it all because he loved me. That's exactly why he does it. Then they carried him away. He does it because he loves. He does it because he loves. They thought that this would be the end of this man. Come on, love on him. From the dead because he loved me. Please. I don't say he loved you. He I say he loved me. Say it's an individual one. He loves me. What did he love anybody? No greater love or mortal man has ever been known. Oh, praise his dear name. He loved me so. Now I am his and he's mine. I got one regret. He suffered it all. But I didn't serve him. 
from a child. Because he loves me. these children out here, their minds are pure. They don't know nothing. I'm going to tell you what, that enemy's waiting on them. That enemy's waiting on them to present things to them. They're causing them to fall in love with things. The church better teach them what they got them in their hand. They better show them what they got them in their hand. I, wish, I said I only got one regret that the ones that came didn't come back and I'm going to tell you why they didn't come back I beat myself up pretty bad because her uncle didn't come back her uncle didn't come back I beat myself up pretty bad I did get pretty hard and pretty, it got pretty hot in here but I'm going to tell you why they didn't come back it wasn't because of me because they know they was going to have to get up and come to this altar and they didn't want to do it that, that, that God was working on it God was working on Jerry back there so bad he couldn't hardly stand it. But it's up to them. They got to choose it. Amen. Right. Choose you this day who you'll serve. You got to choose. I love you, church. I love you. We want Brother Robbie to stand out here just for a second. We're going to show our appreciation. Kevin's going to play a song, and everybody just come up and shake your hand. If you enjoyed him all this week, tonight, come up and let him know. Meet him God's feet on his journey. Evangelism is hard sometimes. you got to go. The rest of us are staying home in the bed. He's on the road preaching. Amen. This church really appreciates both of them.
say our strength be renewed. As we recall what God has done, how we see Him move. If there's anybody here who's found Him faithful, anybody here who knows He's able. Just be brave and follow.